All right, let's get started. First step, print out the second page of the PDF on a heavy cardstock paper. If you don't have a cardstock paper around, you can also print it out on a regular sheet of paper and just glue it to a piece of poster board. And don't forget that thumb slot. The leather I'll be using today is a natural vegetable tan tooling leather from Wicked and Craig. This template is designed to be used with a three and a half to four ounce leather, so roughly 1.5 millimeter thick. Next, we're gonna trace the design onto the grain side of the leather using a scratch awl. This template is also equipped with stitching holes if you'd like to use them. They are approximately five millimeters spaced apart. Step three, go ahead and cut that design out. Here, I'm just using a standard number two X-Acto knife. Step number four, we're gonna finish the top edge of the wallet. Starting somewhere down here in the bottom corner, we're gonna go up the side, across the top, and down the other side, and end in the same exact location on this side. And we're also gonna take care of the thumb slot while we're here. First, I'm using my edging tool to lightly bevel the top edge. Next, we're going to burnish the top edge and the thumb slot. For that, we're going to use tokenol as our burnishing agent and just a standard wood slicker. Step five, we're gonna be tracing our stitching line using a wing divider. We're gonna start up in the peak of the first fold, go across the bottom middle, and then again from the peak of the second fold, going across that section up to the top. Step six, I'm gonna use my stitching irons to mark my stitching line with hand pressure only. Step seven, this one is optional. What I'm doing here is punching through all of those holes I just marked. I like to do this when I'm working on a project with three or more layers, just because I get to use these holes as a guide when I finally glue everything together and it just allows me to punch through the back of the piece with a much straighter line.
Step eight, time to glue our first fold. Before I get to gluing, I'm just going to do a little bit of pre-creasing. The glue I'm using for this project is a water-based cement called Aqualim 315. You have to spread it on both surfaces, let it dry, and then attach. Now add a couple wire clips just to hold it in place. After that dried for a little while, step nine is to glue the second fold. This is basically the same as the last process, putting some glue along the bottom except this time we're gonna be adding a little bit along the side edge. Now, when you're attaching this piece, make sure you're doing it based off the rounded edges. You wanna make sure that the rounded part of the edges and the bottom are all straight and in alignment. Step 10, time to punch those stitching holes. If in step seven you decided to pre-punch your holes like I did, this should be pretty simple for you because now you're only going through two layers instead of three. Step 11, time to saddle stitch. For stitching, I'm gonna be using some number two John James needles, some 0.6 millimeter tiger thread, and this cheapo stitching pony from Amazon. Starting in the corner, I'm gonna be doing one back stitch and then stitching all the way to the end. At the end of my stitch line, I'm doing two and a half back stitches, two full back stitches, and then the last one, I'm just going from front to back so that both pieces of thread are sticking out the back. And now I'm just lightly tamping down the thread with my finishing hammer. Step 12, time to sand the bottom in preparation for edge beveling and finishing. 
Here, I'm just using a standard 320 grit sandpaper. Step 13, after sanding and edge beveling, we're gonna go ahead and burnish this to a finish using tokenol and a wood slicker. Now step 14 is optional, but I'm taking a little bit of BIC4 leather conditioner and rubbing it into all sides of the wallet. And that's it, you're all done. Your wrap wallet is ready to use. If you enjoyed this pattern or got any value out of watching this video, we would greatly, greatly appreciate if you could just tap the like button because it really helps us out with the YouTube algorithm. Either way, thanks for watching.